Welcome to week 5's lecture 1. In the last week, we looked at uh, how to characterize affordability under uncertainty. We did that because we want to consider how a consumer chooses under uncertainty uh, between different outcomes uh, about his consumption possibilities. So now that we have the state contingent budget constraint, let's look at how to characterize preferences under uncertainty. Preferences, uh, we will represent preferences under uncertainty uh, by a function that we will call expected utility function. It is also alternatively called uh, for Nyman Morgenstern utility function. What is so special about this utility function? Let's look at the idea. Uh, let's understand uh, this concept of expected utility function with an example. Suppose you are given uh, this lottery or this gamble and asked what is, uh, how would you think about whether you want to take this gamble or not? So the gamble is something like this. You're going to get $90 with a probability of half and win $0 with a probability of half. So you have a 50-50% chance of getting $90 or getting nothing. The expected utility function basically says that uh, the utility uh, that you get from this particular gamble is the average of the utilities that you would get from the individual outcomes multiplied by the probability of their occurrence. So for example, here the expected utility of this gamble is given to you as the weighted average of the utilities that you derive from individual outcomes. So how much utility you derive from $90 multiplied the probability of its occurrence. Similarly, how much utility you derive from $0 multiplied by the probability of its occurrence. If the numbers that you would give to these two outcomes uh, were something like this, 12 and 2, then your expected utility is going to be 7 for this particular gamble. If you use this procedure to assign uh, a utility number to a gamble, then you're using the expected utility function uh, in order to represent your preferences over uncertainty. So when we say that consumers' preferences can be represented by an expected utility function, or that consumers' preferences have the expected utility property, we mean that we can choose a utility function that has this additive form that we just described here. Now, if given this, uh, or the question is, how does this help us to characterize uh, a consumer further? Uh, one major concept uh, when we talk about uncertainty is that of risk. So uh, we all differ in terms of our risk taking capacity and uh, therefore we would like to characterize uh, each consumer's risk-taking capability. So we want to say, in general, uh, whether you are a risk-loving person or a risk-averse person or a person who is indifferent between taking more risk or taking less risk. Uh, we call that person as risk-neutral. So how do we think about this? In order to think about that, let's look at another concept, which is basically expected money value of the lottery. Now, uh, this addition here looks the same exactly as we did for expected utility, except that notice we are not taking average of the utility that I derive from $90 or from $0. I'm basically calculating uh, what does it mean in terms of having $90 half the times? It would basically mean that I'm getting $45 here 
if I don't get any dollars with a probability of 50%, then 50% of the times I'm going to have zero dollars. So if I sum all these possibilities, on an average, how many dollars I would uh, have, uh, the answer is $45. Okay, now uh, given these two numbers, so we have expected utility, which we saw here uh, as seven, which was the weighted average of utilities that you assigned to individual outcomes of the gamble. And you have the expected money value of the gamble, which is nothing but the average money that you would expect to receive under these circumstances. Okay. Now the question we ask you is that if we give you two choices. One is that we give you $45 with certainty or ask you to face this gamble. Okay, then depending upon what you choose, we will characterize you as a risk loving person or as a risk averse person. So if you are going to get, if the utility that you derive from $45 uh, having $45 for certain is greater than uh, the expected utility of the gamble, then you would be risk averse because in that case you are preferring money for certainty over a chance of winning $90, a uh, 50% chance of winning $90. So how would uh, a risk loving person look at this? A risk-loving person would like to have uncertainty, would be happy to get uh, or get into a situation of uncertainty, and therefore for him, the expected utility is preferred to the utility uh, that he or she derives from a certain $45. So they are risk loving And uh, if they are indifferent, they don't really care whether they have $45 for certain or uh, the gamble where they have 50% chance of getting $90, uh, they basically give them uh, the same ranking, then that person is basically risk neutral. Can we use a diagram to show that? Sure. So here uh, on the x-axis we are basically calculating wealth. On the y-axis we are looking at utility. Now here we are going to look at two numbers specifically. What is the utility that I'm going to get from having $45 for certain versus what is the utility uh, that I'm going to get uh, or what is the expected utility of the gamble? Now uh, here, this point here is 2, this point here is 12, which is nothing but the utility ranking that I gave to 90 and 0 particular. Uh, we use the distance formula here to calculate the expected utility, which is nothing but the probabilities multiplied by the utility numbers. Given that it is uh, the probability is 50-50%, uh, you get a midpoint nice here, which is the expected utility of the gamble. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, $45 has this utility number. So if you derive a higher utility from having $45 for certain rather than getting or facing the gamble and have expected utility of seven, we will call you risk averse. You prefer a lower amount for certain than having a 50% chance of getting a higher amount. Notice that for a risk averse person, the marginal utility declines as the wealth rises. So the utility curve is increasing, but it increases at a decreasing rate. On the other hand, a person who uh, likes risk would get less utility from having a smaller amount, but will get more utility from uh, having at least or just a 50% chance of getting a higher amount. In that case, uh, the situation just reverses. The utility function lies below any two points that you join them, which basically means that the expected utility of any of these gambles okay, uh, is preferred to 
the utility that you derive from individual sums having for certain. So here, uh, you like the outcome uh, where you have at least 50% chance of winning a higher amount to an outcome where you are getting money for certain uh, or where you are getting less money but that money is for certain. So you prefer uncertainty over certainty and hence you are called as risk, new, uh, risk uh, loving. A risk neutral person doesn't uh, is okay either way. So his marginal utility is constant as wealth rises. So two state contingent consumption plans will be called equal if they have same expected utility ranking. So you guessed it right, we are looking at a convex indifference curve. So here, instead of two goods, we have consumption in a particular state. So A is accident and N A is no accident. And the expected utility that I derive from these two outcomes is represented by these curves. Each curve represents a single uh, ranking of expected utility, but different mixes of uh, consumption uh, under different circumstances. But all use the same expected utility. So same properties, as you go higher up, you uh, get higher utility. As you go lower towards the origin, you get lower utility. So this is, in a nutshell, how we are going to represent preferences under uncertainty. So the major concepts are to uh, look at expected utility, which is nothing but uh, weighted average of utility that you derive from the individual outcomes of a particular gamble and the weights being its associated probabilities. If you prefer the gamble, then you will assign uh, a lower number for getting uh, the average amount or money value of that gamble for certain. When I calculate such expected utility numbers for different mixes of CNA and CA and rank the bundles or put all the bundles with same expected utility number on one axis, I get an indifference curve. All right, uh, I suggest that you do the first quiz now before going on to the second part.